hello. Um, my name is uh, Jan Peter van Zandwijk. I work with uh, the Netherlands Forensic Institute, and in this half hour, I will tell you about uh, some research that we did on the health app of the uh, iOS, and then you can go to lunch. So I did this research not alone. I worked together with uh, with my colleague Abdul Bostas, uh, who helped me with uh, with a lot of, lot of the experiments. And the most important thing that I want you to remember from this uh, presentation is that the, uh, the health app registers both steps and distances. And, uh, and we have found that the accuracy of the steps registers is much, uh, much better than the accuracy of the distances registered. Um, so um, I will, uh, what are we talking about? So it, uh, the iPhone health app is a system app which is uh, shifted, uh, shipped with, uh, with the iPhone since iOS version 8. And if you look at it, then it's this one with, uh, with the heart. And if you open it, then what you get to see is this menu. So it stores a lot of information, and it falls also in a broader category of uh, all kinds of health-related applications, which are both available at uh, iPhone, iPhones, but also at other kinds of, uh, of telephones. So it, uh, the part we are interested in is in uh, this area. So it registers information about all kinds of daily activities that you do and it does so automatically. It also stores other things about uh, uh, even things like reproductive health. I don't know what you want to register about that, but uh, the things from a forensic viewpoint that we are interested in is within this daily activity. So if you click on that one, when it opens, you see it stores three different kinds of things. So it stores number of steps, it stores distances that you travel, and it stores also the number of flights the number of stairs that you go up and down. So these kind of things. And if you, for instance, uh, click on number of steps, then what you get to see is some detailed information. So you get aggregated number of steps uh, over periods of days in this case. So you can see on which day we did the experiments. It must be obvious from, from this one. And if you <laughs> click on one of these days, you even get more detailed information. So this, this is number of steps uh, with time periods in the order of one minute that you get. And if you do that for distances as well, you can also get the same detailed information. Now, of course, this is uh, from a forensic perspective, very interesting information, but if you want to use it, then you must have some idea about the right reliability of these kinds of information. Um, first, a uh, quick, uh, quick word about the forensic use. So yesterday we also had an interesting workshop about probabilistic, probabilistic reasoning uh, in forensics. So uh, in what way could, could you use, if you know something about the accuracy, this type of data? Now, for instance, you can make, try to make a probability statement about different, uh, several distances. So if in one case you have two scenarios, for instance, uh, one scenario in which the distance um, Oh, excuse me. Um, this one. Oh, oh, this is very bad. Uh, I guess this one. We have a scenario that the distance is 100 meters, or that the distance might be 250 meters. Then you can try to make a probability statement about the likelihood of the traces that you find in the telephone, under the assumption that the distance was 100 meters, and also the likelihood of the traces that you find in the telephone, under the assumption that the distance was 250 meters. And another one is also if you have several scenarios which might have things that might have happened in the case, then you can also make similarly uh, a probability statement how likely are the traces that you find in the health app under the assumption that the first scenario is true or that the second scenario is true. So those kind of things, those kind of probability statements can be made if you have some uh, idea about the reliability of this information which is present on the iPhone. And finally, of course, uh, if you, it can also be used as an indication that uh, the use of the telephone was still active, was walking, and didn't, uh, didn't die already, for instance. So it can, can also be used as an indication of physical user activity. Now, of course, uh, we're not the first ones to think about it. So uh, there have been some, uh, at least in the Netherlands, there have been at least two high-profile cases in which this data from the high, uh, iPhone health app was used. Uh, as evidence in a case, and also 
As I noticed, in Germany there was, uh, was a high-profile case in which uh, data from the health app was used. In that case, they used the number of flights because the question is whether somebody traveled up some, uh, some stairs. So that this was a kind of rape murder case in Germany. So the people from the Netherlands will, will recognize this one. It was a very high-profile murder case in the Netherlands. Also, uh, in that case, the, the suspect made some detailed statements about what had happened during a time period, so it could be matched against the data from the health app to see whether it matches or... So this was one. And finally, this, so this, this was a case in America. It was, not the, it was not the iPhone health app, but it was a Fitbit, so it's another kind of health-related uh, application. So this was a, a kind of wrist, uh, wristband that you can wear, and in this case, it was also a murder case. And then uh, the husband, he had uh, a murdered wife, and in that case, uh, he claimed that somebody uh, raided the house and she was killed, but data from the Fitbit indicated that uh, in, during the period that he said that his wife was killed, she was still, there were still some steps or distances registered. So that uh, disproved his, uh, his story. Okay, uh, so the main question I will address in this presentation is uh, about the reliability of the number of steps and the distances which are registered in the, in the iPhone. And our approach is to do experiments and then compare what we find in the telephone to the ground truth. So we used uh, fixed routes, so we know what the real distance is, and we compared it to what was found in the telephone. And we also manually recorded uh, the steps. I will, I will show how we, how we did it, and then we compared it by the things that we really found in the telephone itself. So in that way, you get a, get a feeling about the reliability and also the factors that influence the accuracy of the device. Okay, so we used uh, three different uh, telephones, an iPhone 6, a 7, and an 8. We had one subject. Um, we had the telephone at different locations, so we put them in his trouser pockets. We put it in a backpack. We put it uh, in a jacket, jacket pocket, high, and put them in the hand. And also put it in a low, uh, low jacket pocket. And finally, we gave him one of those things that... Uh, Flight attendants also have so a manual that enabled him to manually count the number of steps. And we also had the exper experiment to walk together with this, so we had a second manual count of the number of steps. So this is uh, what we did. Finally, we had, uh, so this is a part of the premises of the NFI in the Netherlands. So we had a forensic archaeologist. He has very good uh, specialized equipment in order to determine the location of certain points, so we had him trace out the route. So we know exactly knew the, lo uh, the location of these uh, numbered points, and on the basis of that we could define some walking routes. So we had one, we always started at the, at the first point, and then we had a route of about uh, 100 meters, which ended at a clear landmark. So you could also see, always see that you ended at the same position, so we had one of about 100 meters, we had one of about 250 meters, and finally we had one of about 400, 450 meters, so we had three different distances that all the subjects had to walk. Um, so to sum up, uh, I got uh, a number of colleagues who are willing to participate, so we had five subjects walking with all these telephones. Uh, we tried two uh, different walking speeds, so we tried First, we tried uh, normal walking, and then we tried some freely chosen uh, running pace in order to see how that influences the accuracy of the device. As I said, we had three different distances to see whether that was also a factor influencing. And as I showed you, uh, the telephones were carried at five different locations. Now, we wanted to have some, um, uh, some good statistics. So... For each combination of walking speed, distance, and carrying location, we asked them to walk the distance twice to see the, whether the registrations match, actually match to one another. So that was uh, really quite, quite some work. So in total, uh, all the subjects, they, they walked about 600 trials, which amounts to 130 kilometers. <laughs> so a lot of us got a very good con uh, walking condition. Uh, and mainly we counted about 450,000 uh, steps using the counter. Now, during the trials, uh, we also recorded, many re we recorded the start and the end time of one specific trial. So you, you can see it here. So, oh, excuse me. 
we recorded the start time and the end time, and also the number of steps which were recorded by the subject using the clicker. Uh, and we did that because uh, the digital part of this research is a little bit lim limited, but uh, nevertheless, I will show you there is some uh, database on the device itself which stores all the information about the health app. It's the, it says it's healthy base secure, but it's not secure. It's just a uh, SQLite format database which you can pull off using commercial tools, and then you can get the data out using standard SQL commands. <coughs> and if you look in the database, so this is the information that we extract from the database, then what you see is you get uh, information about the start time of a registration and the end time of a registration. So this is the database ID. Uh, and you see, you get information about <coughs> the number of steps and uh, the number of distances. But what you see is that it can happen that, um, so this, these are the timestamps, and this is the number of uh, steps registered and the number of distances registered. But what you see is that if you have a long trial, then there can be several uh, registrations corresponding to the same trial. So the only thing that we had to match afterwards is, uh, and that's why we used this form which has the start time and the end time of the trial, then we have had to match uh, the, the registration in the database to the actual trial. So in this case, uh, we had to compute the total number of these registrations which are spread over several timestamps in the database. That's the only thing that, uh, that we had to do offline. And then we got uh, the total number of steps and the total distance, and we could compare it to the actual values that, uh, that we measured ourselves. Okay, so concerning the number of steps, then we get this graph. So this, the data for all the three telephones that we used for all walking distances, for all walking speeds, and for all carrying locations together. And on, the, on this axis on this side, it is the number of manually measured steps, and this is the number of steps which are registered by the telephone. And the black line indicates when both are together, then all the data points uh, will fall on the, on the black line. So in this case, you see there's a very strong correlation between uh, the actual number of, uh, of steps and the number of steps which are registered by the telephone itself. So we tried to uh, quantify this a bit. So we computed what is called the mean absolute percentage errors, which sounds very complicated, but only is the percentual deviation of the number of registered steps with respect to the no true number of steps. So for instance, if you take 100 steps and in the telephone there are 110 steps, then the difference is 10 steps. And you, you take that as a percentage of the uh, actual number of steps, so in that case the error would be 10%. So that, that's all. Thing. And then you average over all different trials, you average over all conditions, and what we find is that uh, this average error is about 2%. So here you have uh, for the three different tele uh, telephones that were in, in, uh, investigated, and it's always about 2%, so that's pretty good. So to come back to the main message, which I showed you at the start of the presentation, so on the basis of the data, I hope you can, would now believe that the number of steps um, registered by the telephone are accurate. Unfortunately, for the number of uh, distances registered by the, the, by the telephone, the situation is somewhat more complicated, because in that case, it does... De depend on several other factors, like walking speed and the, the style of walking of the subject, for instance. Now, in order to show that, I will show you some data. In this case, this was the iPhone 7 that we investigated. In this case, the telephone was worn in the trouser pocket. So on this side here, you have our five subjects, each time repeated, and there are three groups which correspond to the three, three different distances that we had the subjects walk. And the green line indicates the true distance that we've measured. There are bars which are blue, which means this that the distance which is registered by the telephone when the subject is walking. And the red ones are the, is the distance that is registered by the telephone when the subject is running the same distance. So in this case, uh, you can clearly see that for all our subjects and for all our distances, uh, the, the telephone registers a larger distance when the subject is running compared to the distance uh, which is registered when the subject is walking. Now another example is this one. 
Um, so this is uh, the same telephone, but in this case, the telephone was, was held in the hand during walking. And what you, uh, so this is the same, so the subjects are over here. Uh, the blue one is walking and the red one is running. So what you see in this case is that there's one subject. When, uh, and let's see. When the subject is running in this case, then there's an enormous uh, larger distance which is registered by the telephone. Uh, we attributed this to the walking style because this was somebody who did, who used to do something at athletics. So when he was when he was running, then he started to swing his arms very much, and you can clearly see that that affects the distance registered by the telephone. Okay, so this summarizes what I've just said. So we see there is a, a large spread in distances registered by the telephone. And sometimes the distance is larger when you are running, like the first uh, example that I've shown you. And sometimes the distance is larger when you are walking. And also we see that there can be large differences between subjects, which we attribute to the walking style of the subject. So if you, you walk in a different way, then you can also get different registrations. Uh, unfortunately, I only show, uh, did show you some data from the iPhone 7, but for the other two telephones, we got very similar results. Okay. Um, we also uh, computed, like, like for the number of steps, uh, the, percentual, the average percentual accuracy of distances. And what we notice is that the distance registered by the telephones are more often uh, too low than too high, but there is a large spread which can go up to 30 to, or 40 percent of the true value, which is significantly larger than the error that we found in the number of uh, steps, which was about 2%, as I've just shown you. Okay, so we, we were really puzzled about this large spread in uh, distances registered by the telephone, and we came up with some hypothesis which might explain the reason why these dis distances are sometimes larger, for instance, if you have it in the trouser pocket. And our idea was when the telephone performs a larger forward-backward motion, then for some reason the distance registered by the telephone is larger, which would explain if you have the telephone in your trouser pocket, if you run, then there's a larger forward-backward motion than when you are walking. And also this subject which swung the with the telephone in its hand is a larger forward-backward mo motion. So that's one of the hypotheses that we formulated. And in order to test it, we had our subjects um, perform some additional experiments with the telephone in the hand. So normally we didn't give any instructions about the way that you should keep your hands during walking. They could do it the way they liked. But now we specifically asked them, go walking with and keep your hands as close, closely as possible, like this. And after that, we asked them, go swing as much as possible. Go back, like this. And then we compared the data from those experiments to the ones in which there was no uh, construct, uh, instruction given concerning arm movement. And from that we get uh, this picture. So this is the same. So the subjects are over here. The blue ones are the distances registered in walking, and the red ones are the distances registered in uh, running. And the initial ones with the triangles are the single trial that we, that we got when the subject was swinging his arms like this, as much as possible. And the black, the black ones are the distances that are registered when the subject was instructed to keep his arms as much as, as still as possible. So you see in this case that the distances follow the same trend. So if you are swinging with your arms, then you get a larger distance. And if you keep your arms um, as, still, as, as still as possible, then you get about the same or sometimes a less Distance. So we take this as, an, as another confirmation that in, indeed the forward-backward motion of the telephone is an important factor influencing the distance. So this uh, summarizes, but of course we are the Netherlands Forensic Institute, so we should be careful. It was only one additional trial that we had the subjects make, so, um, but it, it can be taken as an, as an indication. And it's, it seems to point in the same direction as, uh, as I just said before. So to come back to our main message again, so 
I hope I, I could convince you that uh, I already did that the uh, number of steps are accurate up to about 2%, and now the, uh, the distances registered by the telephone, oh, excuse me, they are influenced by a number of factors, and they can deviate about 30 to 40 percent. But if you take that, in, in, that shouldn't be a problem to use it for forensic, but you should be aware of these peculiarities of the, of the health app. So if you want, uh, so if, as I showed you bef uh, before at the beginning, if you have a scenario in which one distance is 100 meters and the other one is 200 meters, then on, on the basis of this, uh, data, you can make some probability statement, but if the distance is 100 meters for the, for the first scenario and 110 for the second one, then the spread is so large that uh, it, it will not be very meaningful. Okay, so once again with the NFI, so one caveat. So uh, one very important point is that uh, we investigated the situation if when you are walking or running, how accurate are the steps that you get? So and it doesn't imply from if you get steps and distances registered in the telephone, it doesn't need to imply that some running or walking has taken place. You can also have uh, other reasons why you get uh, registered distances and steps in, uh, in the telephone. For instance, if you ride, drive in a car over uh, some traffic bumps, you can also get some registration. And if, if you shake the telephone, you can also get it. But if you know there is walking, has been walking, then you can use this data in order to estimate the accuracy. Okay, I mean, we have, uh, now we, we really did our best to get to produce data, but it's of course uh, still a bit of a limited data set. We had five subjects and, and we see that, we also saw there are individual differences between uh, subjects which affect the accuracy of the, of the distances, for instance. So you have, have to be a bit careful. Okay, so this, is, uh, this was, was our main uh, part of research. At the moment we are working with our forensic statistics group in order to see when we can, can develop some uh, statistical model. So use our data to develop a statistical model which can be used to uh, estimate number of steps and distances on the basis of traces that you find in, um, in a telephone and also get some estimate of the, uh, the spread that you can expect in that case. Uh, of course, uh, we are hoping to keep our data set up to date because continuously there are new versions of iOS and also new versions of, uh, of iPhones coming to the market. So we really have to, get, to put some effort in to keep our data set. And also if you get in case, we, um, we will st soon start analyzing a case in the telephone that we have not analyzed. So we have to do that over again. And it would also be very interesting to investigate other kinds of health related technology, which contain a lot of information. For instance, we did not do any experiments with uh, with Apple, Web, Apple Watch or with uh, Samsung or Android telephones or some third-party apps. It might also be very interesting to have, uh, have a look for it. But at least I hope I, I was able to convince you that these health-related apps, and more specifically the health app on the iPhone, has some potential to be used as evidence in forensic casework. Okay, that's what I had to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, did you uh, think about, like, if I take a walk, I will walk 100 steps from, uh, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from time A to time B, yeah. and then I, I walk 100, ste uh, 100 steps. Yes. Then I set my watch or my time on the uh, phone back and start walking again. Would you see 200 steps? during that five minute period of time or would you see 100 steps and would the app like uh, rewrite itself in the database and say oh I have updated my timestamps or would it just like oh increase the timestamps okay. or the steps? That's a very inter interesting question. We, we didn't do that but uh, I would expect you would get two kinds of, uh, of registrations with the, with the same timestamp. Yeah. I, I don't know because we didn't, didn't do that, that kind of experiments, but sometimes uh, some strange things might happen with, uh, with those kind of things.
Thank you uh, for an interesting presentation. Uh, I'm from the University of Leiden Applied Sciences in the Netherlands, so I also with great interest followed the case, uh, the murder case. Um, so I remember that uh, Apple uh, responded maybe in a general sense that um, uh, they don't think their health app is, uh, uh, can be used as forensic evidence. Yes. Um, um, did they actually pro approach you or was there a discussion going on between NFI and Apple? Because this clearly shows that, uh, that you can make some conclusions about it. Yeah, so now we actually, in one case, we asked, uh, we formally asked uh, Apple for, uh, for a statement about uh, whether we could use the date of, of, uh, of the health app for forensic purposes. And then we got the answer that, that you just summarized it. Okay. So uh, they said something like, uh, uh, we do our best to make our pro uh, products as uh, reliable as possible, but it depends on different factors and uh, you shouldn't really use it for, uh, for forensics. That's the kind of response that we got. Yeah. But we, we, we didn't discuss these results with, uh, with Apple. Okay, yeah. thank you. And do, you, do you have any idea how um, the distance is computed from the steps in the health app? Because, uh, I mean, there must be some formula or algorithm to do that, and obviously they're not using GPS. No, that, that's a very interesting, uh, very interesting question, yes. Uh, I expect that uh, because the number of steps is very accurate, so there, there are all kinds of sensors in the telephone, for instance, uh, accelerometers and uh, gyroscopes. And I think it's very easy to, uh, to detect uh, steps from, from those accelerometer signals because you get some, some spike in acceleration when you, your foot strikes uh, the ground. And uh, on the basis of that, I suspect that they make some dynamic estimate of stride length and then they compute, uh, they multiply the number of steps by this estimate of the stride length in order to get the distance, something like that. But how it exactly works, that's, that's still a complete mystery. Yeah. Uh, following up on his question regarding stride length, um, is it, were the same participants using the same phone where maybe the stride length calculations would have been differentiated by participants? I, I'm, I'm not sure if each participant used a separate device or if it was the same device per participant and if those profiles might have been askew by differences in stride length between different participants. No, we, we used uh, the same telephones for different subjects, but uh, the experiments were done on different days. Okay. So that, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, have you tried to collect the data from Apple Watch? It, it is probably more accurate. Oh, yeah. Probably not. I have no idea. No, that I saw in the program there will be some, some presentation about, uh, about, about collecting data from, uh, from Apple Watch. But uh, it's possible to, uh, uh, to synchronize the, or include uh, the Apple, Apple Watch into the health app as one of the sources of information. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. It is being synchronized, but it goes to the same health database. Yeah, so it, uses, it can use several sources of uh, information together. So that would also be very interesting to see whether the, the distance would become more accurate if you use both the health app and the Apple Watch together. Those yeah, we have to try. Yeah. Hello, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Uh, it's easier than others, or is it very interesting? I, I just want to recommend the uh, subject, the subject of the participant. I want to just to, uh, classify, the, for example, the woman who has the show leg or can be, is the participants can be the child, their okay. distance is a little different. Uh, if, so. Uh, that's one of the points I didn't mention in the presentation, but within the health app, you can also uh, put in your own, own body measurements. So uh, in the main series of experiments, we didn't put any body measurements into the, uh, into the app, but after that, we did a, a second a smaller series of experiments in which we actually put in the, the length of the subject and the weight of the subject, and then we saw some small changes. Okay, thank you. Yeah.
Thank you again yeah. okay, for a very interesting presentation. Yeah.